I'm going to start by attaching the thread to the midsection of the hook. At that point, I'll bring in the three strands of the crystal flash tail. And when I tie these in, I'm going to butt the front ends of them up just behind the bead. And I'm going to wrap rearward to a point that is about even with the bottom of the tungsten bead. Approximately, somewhere in there. When I cut this tail off, I want it to be uh, about the length of the straight part of the hook shank. That's my approximate goal there. After I snip that tail off, I'm going to come in and I prefer to tie the wire in on the far side of the hook shank. I'm going to slide it just right up underneath the back of this bead here. And this is the same concept that uh, you would use in tying a pattern such as uh, Copper John, where we want this wire to parallel the hook shank as I wrap rearward to my stopping point. So I'm going to tie that back right to where the tail fibers start. When I've stopped right there, I'm going to bring in my piece of ostrich roll. And I'm going to catch the tip of it right here, secure it with a few wraps, and then simply return my thread right up there behind the bead. I like to use uh, a pair of these rotating hackle pliers that spin as you use them. And so I'm going to grab onto the end of that ostrich roll with a pair of these pliers before I begin to work this forward. So if I had a stationary vise, obviously I would have to um, wrap this or walk this hurl around it. I uh, use a rotary vise. And so all I'm going to do here really simply is I'm going to loosen up that vise. And I'm going to start to rotate the vise. As I come through, you can see where that hook point may catch the hurl. And so that's something you have to be cognizant of. As it comes around, you're just going to kind of wiggle it and weave it around the hook <clears throat> until you get it far enough forward to where you've cleared it out of that area. So I'm looking to cover about two thirds of the hook shank with the ostrich roll. And once I get it to that point, I'm going to secure it with the thread. So I come over the top, secure it once, let it out of those hackle pliers, catch it one more time, and then throw a few wraps down behind the bead. And when I wrap this wire forward here, it's crucial that I wiggle it back and forth as I bring it forward. I prefer to start the first wrap or two with the hook upside down. It allows me to make sure that this wrap right here and the one after it locks into place. After I have that set, then I rotate it upright in the vise. And like I said, as you move forward here, you're trying to create a tightly segmented body. And as you wiggle, you're just making sure that some of those fibers, not all of them, but some of those fibers are going to make their way and peek through the segments of the body. When I've covered about two thirds of that hook shank, I'll pull that wire up tight, moisten my fingertips, and brush those fibers kind of back out of the way. I want to secure this with probably a good four to five wraps of the thread. And then I'm going to take it and we're just going to helicopter it. So I'm going to grab it here by the base and just spin it until that wire snaps off. Now this is the rubber leg version of the Fusion Nymph. And so this stage of the process is still similar at this point. I finished the hurl, I finished the wire, and I'm going to create a sparse dubbing loop. After we finish that dubbing loop, though, we're going to set it off to the side so we can get those legs tied in. Always remember when you bring in your dubbing here in this ice dubbing, that less is usually more. We're trying to create sparse. Uh, and the reason why is we want those fibers that stick out of the edge of the dubbing loop to kind of strand back, give it a little bit of a wiggly pulsing movement here. So I'm going to bring the thread over the top, secure it with a couple wraps. I just use my fingers here, spin it into a nice tight loop. And I'm going to come back with those same hackle pliers that I used earlier. Clip onto the base of that and just set it out of the way. At this point, I'll grab my strand. This is a this is a size eight fly, and so I'm using small for the size of sexy floss here. So I'll tilt this sideways so you can get a better look at it. I'm going to come in with this strand here. I'm going to bring my thread to about the halfway point of that um, uh, thorax there. Excuse me, and I'm just going to catch it with a wrap or two. So I'll wrap back to where the segmented body starts. And I want this back leg here to gauge it. I want it to be about as long as the abdomen. I want that front leg to be approximately the same size. And that'd be perfect, but somewhere in there. Then we'll repeat the same process on the near side. Catch it with a wrap or two. If that rubber leg squirms on you or it doesn't end up where you want, feel free to grab a hold of it, put it in place, get it to where you need it to be. Once you get this guy into the water, these legs are going to wiggle and move anyway, so 
don't uh, don't stress yourself out about having it in the exact perfect position. Just get them firmly attached. All right, before I bring this dubbing loop forward, I'm going to put a little drop of Zap-A-Gap onto my bodkin here, and I'm going to hit right in the middle of the thorax there. And that's just going to add to the durability of it. Once I have that situated, I'm going to come right in front of these legs here. Once I start to get this ice dub actually onto the shank of the hook, I'm just going to take a general brush back each time. Try to keep those fibers back so that they continue to pulse and wiggle and do what I want them to do. Come right in front of the bead here and I'm going to lay down probably two or three wraps just to build it up behind the bead. Once I get it to where I think that space is fairly well filled, I'm going to come over the top, cinch it down. Snip that off, and I'll come in, and I do my whip finishes with my hands. If you have a tool, that's cool. If you want to throw down a half hitch, totally your choice. Obviously, secure and finish your work. And then because I'm such a stickler on durability, I'm going to rotate this guy upside down. I'm going to come in with just a little drop of zap gap. And hit that guy right on the bottom where those thread wraps are. So this is the golden version. Uh, as I've said before, if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, the color combinations for this nymph are limitless. Uh, this is a great golden stone imitation in the early spring. Um, but when you look at the colors of Crystal Flash for the tail, UTC wire, Ostrich Hurl, and the Ice Dub, your color combinations for these flies, large and small, rubber legs or no rubber legs, are pretty much endless.